Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. May God bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you say special? Okay, tell the person next to you today is special. It's a special day today. The reason is we have a, a special message, a special ministration. Amen? Uh, for those of you who may be joining us uh, for the first time, either online or those in the meeting here, we have a, a special program that is ongoing now, started on Thursday. We call it the Global Crusade with Kumoi. This is a great event that is shaking the world. And I believe as you connect with us today, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. So this morning, we have a very special message coming all the way from our global headquarters. And as a man, God, man of God ministers today, you and me will be blessed in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up as we prepare ourselves. We are going to have a choir ministration followed by the word of God that is coming from our Father in the Lord, Pastor W.F. Kumui. It's a global service, a global message. The Lord will bless you. Talk to God in prayer. Pray for yourself and say, God, I'm here. Today, I want to be blessed. The Lord will bless you. Just talk to God in prayer. Pray, oh God, I'm here today. I want to be blessed. It'll be a special blessing coming your way. Need you. So let's just uh, prepare ourselves. I want you to pray for yourself. You have a special day today. Whatever you have in your heart, a desire, a passion, something you want the Lord to do for you, this is the day. We're not gathered as a routine, but the Lord is here with us. Let's call upon the Lord to pray for ourselves that the Lord will minister to us today in a special way as the word of God comes. Find room in our hearts and the blessing will flow in us. And will not be the same again. Talk to God in prayer. Open your mouth as you pray for yourself. The Lord will minister to you today. The word of God comes. The blessing will flow in our lives. Let's talk to God in prayer. Open your mouth and say, God, I'm here today. That this special day, this special message will make me special today. I'll receive a blessing. I'll receive a touch, ministration, a correction, an instruction in righteousness, a blessing, a breakthrough. The Lord will do it in our lives. Talk to God in prayer. Pray for yourself. God, I'm here today. Let a blessing flow. Let a blessing flow all the way into my life today. But what you have in store for me, for me, will come my way again. Let's continue to pray as we prepare ourselves. This is a special day. The Lord is ministering to us. Let's talk to God in prayer. As we listen to the song, as we listen to the message, the word of God will come with power. And the Lord will bless each one of us will not be the same again. Let's open our hearts to the Lord and say, God, we are here this morning. We want a blessing from above. Let it be a special blessing today. As I go out of this place, don't want to go back the same. The Lord will pour his blessing upon us.
I. So Jesus will stand against the tempest, knowing his disciples has no faith, just to prove that he is still the master. He spoke, and the wind and the sea obey. He still began. Never come and don't ask for miracle. Jesus will still be God. He still be God. of our son. Ever since the angels came and told her, this child is the blessed son of God. So when she saw the people gather around him, watching for a miracle to prove that he would be one and great Messiah. She just smiled because she already knew. Number four, he's a multiplier 
of disciples and churches. Finally, it's a miracle career with a common anointing. A leader that has mastery over his life inspires his followers and sets the pace for them all to be followed and celebrated. Please join me to bring to the podium a role model, a real mentor, a real man of God, the general superintendent of Deeper Life Christian Ministry Worldwide, Pastor Dr. W.F. Gumoye. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Proud. Everyone, praise the Lord. Now, I don't know what will happen while I'm talking. The rain might fall, but you are not afraid of the rain. You're not afraid of the sky. Whatever comes from the sky will be a blessing unto you. Father, I thank you and bless your name, glorious day, great day. And we know you will bless everyone abundantly in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will turn our hearts towards yourself. And whatever you have ever done, whatever you can do today, whatever you will ever do, here we are carriers of miracles. Shower your blessing upon everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're talking about faith. We're talking about great faith. We're talking about growing faith. Faith, great faith. Growing faith. Now, when we are faith in God, we don't say he can do this, but there's no but in our language. We don't say God can do this. We don't say, but even if he does not do it, he's still God. We don't say that. When the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, they came out with faith. Look at the Red Sea before them. They didn't say, Egyptian army behind us. The Red Sea before us. God can open the Red Sea. But even if he does not open the Red Sea, and we're rushing, and we perish, it's still God that's not faith. Here is mountain. And they were going to the promised land. And God said, Moses, take that rod in your hand. Strike the rock. Water will come out for millions of people. Moses did not say, here is the rod. That is the mountain. I'm going to strike. And Moses did not say, even if it doesn't bring out water, even if he doesn't fulfill his word, even if he becomes a liar. He is still God. Never, never. Faith does not say, I believe. But even if it does not happen, he's still God. We don't say that. What we know is that God is a faithful God. It's a mighty God. And his faithfulness reaches unto heaven. We never put a doubt a but, and even if not, we never put that on the word of the promise of God. What he has said, he will do. I pray for the sick. I say Christ is the very son of God, our redeemer. He took our sin. He took our sickness. He took our infirmity away. Now I'm going to pray. And I say, God, you'll back your word. But even if you don't back up your word, you're still God. No. He will back up his word. And he went out and preached everywhere. 
and God walking with them with signs following. They never, never, never thought I'll preach. Even if he doesn't save the people, it's still God that makes him a liar. I'll pray. Even if he doesn't heal the sick, it's still God that some believe. We're talking about the possibilities of faith, great faith, and growing faith. Look at faith. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Uh, look at number two there. That's great faith. We're looking at Matthew chapter 15. Reading from verse 28. In verse 28, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, no shadow of doubt, no element of doubt, no iota of doubt. It says, woman, thou art of great faith. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her son, a daughter, was made whole from that very hour. You are made whole today. You are turned around today in Jesus' name. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 3. In Second Thessalonians, second, second, second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is right, suitable, meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Your faith groweth exceedingly. And then it says, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other about this. The faith grows exceedingly. There is faith, and that's at the level where people stay, many people all their lives, faith, faith, go beyond, there is great faith. Go beyond that, there is growing faith and everything you need. No doubt, no unbelief, everything you need will be granted unto you. Amen. <laughs> We're looking at three things there. Number one, Preventing hardness of heart with faith at the foundation. When you build your Christian life on faith as the foundation, then hardness of heart will be prevented, will get away from you in Jesus' name. Why? Do I need the removal of the hardness of heart because hardness of heart actually is being hardened against God's program, God's project, God's promise, God's provision, and the divine prophecy. When somebody hardens his heart, it's like, as I was, so I want to be, and so I will ever be. No change. No transformation, no conversion, no new light, no new understanding, no new strength. As we were slaves in the land of Egypt. So uh, we now we seal up the slave mentality. And we want to remain, but God has promised he's going to turn everything around. No, I'm hiding and I want to remain the way I am. Those people 
because of their hardened heart and because of their unbelief they never got to the promised land the people that got there the people that said yes to the lord are the people that throw away the hardness of heart and they did not allow the hardness of heart to re to make them remain the way they were point number one preventing hardness of heart with faith at the foundation number two is preserving holiness for heaven through faith in his faithfulness you understand god will never change his nature of holiness will never change his demand of holiness will never change and his grace that is able to turn lives around and make us holy will never change I suppose for a moment god will change that he demanded holiness and now he has changed he doesn't demand holiness anymore to get to heaven you know the meaning of that that means that the almighty god wasted the life of his only begotten son if everybody could enter heaven without holiness christ did not need to come we just live the way we live we turn over a new leaf and we do the best we can even though it does not match his holiness he gets us to heaven why did christ come it's because we couldn't be holy by ourselves we couldn't get to heaven by ourselves that's why he sent the lord jesus Christ. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son if after the son died on the cross he shed his blood he suffered and now we discover holiness of heart is not possible so christ wasted all that suffering all that pain everything he went through and now we can live lives the way we want holiness of heart is not demanded anymore that means god has changed he says i am god i change not that means his standard his demand has not changed it still takes holiness follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man no one can see the lord thank you jesus that's why you came so you can turn our lives around so you can prepare us for heaven so we preserve that holiness for heaven through faith in his faithfulness number three we're looking at possessing humility and honesty in the fellowship of his family pride will take us away from god haughtiness will push us away from god and being self-centeredness i am who i am nobody can read the bible to me nobody can instruct me the way to go that pride brings a person down takes a person away from the lord he has shown you oh man what is demanded what god has commanded that you will walk justly you will love mercy and walk humbly with thy god once that uh, humility is not there once honesty is not there in our lives you can be you can belong to any church in town you can read the biggest bible on earth and you can sacrifice whatever once there's no humility and there's no uh, honesty we waste our lives why did we come no change you are like nebuchadnezzar proud and nebuchadnezzar said that he who exalts himself the proud he is able to abase and we don't even have the knowledge of Nebuchadnezzar, if we remain proud, proud in our sin, proud in our weakness, proud in our ignorance, but it takes having humility and honesty, possessing 
humility and honesty as we fellowship in the family of God. We're looking at number one. Number one, we're looking at preventing hardness of heart with faith at the foundation. It says, the Lord knoweth who are is. And let everyone who calls on the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And it tells us that is the foundation. Hey, look at Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. And, and uh, uh, Lord God, behold thou hast made the heaven and the earth. And then it says, you did that by the great, by the great power and stretch out arm. Look at this. And there is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing too hard for thee. There is no heart of man that is so hard that God cannot soften. Nothing too hard for thee. There is no hardness in any heart, in any brain. There is no hardness in any personality that if we bring it to God, that God cannot soften because there is nothing too hard for thee. In Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 14. Genesis 18 Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? You need to answer that one. Your heart, like Adam and stone, because that's the nature of man. And the softened heart that goes on softly and gently, I've heard his word. It says judgment is coming. It says it's appointed unto man, every man, every woman to die. And after this, the judgment, the people whose hearts will still be hard after hearing about the judgment at the commencement of eternity. And then it goes on, continues forever and ever. Had in heart, but you know, all you have to do, you never cry, you never have sorrow for sin, you never have regret for sin, and your heart is hardened. But there is nothing to hard for the Lord. And we who preach, preachers, pastors, reverends, bishops, we need to look at that. And we need to agree with God. There is nothing to hard for God because he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. At the times we confront people and we preach the word of God to them and we say, this is the way. Walk ye therein. And the fellow, look at what he does to his own heart, his own life. In Zechariah chapter 7, reading from verse 12. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Not God. God did not make us hard. God did not give us an ideology a set mind that will say no to him. How can you as a father want your child to say no to you? And you still punish him for saying no when a heart is hardened. Against the word of God, judgment comes. It will not be right for God to harden your heart and punish you for that hardness. You are the one that make your heart hard. It says they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, the word, and the words which the Lord himself 
had spoken. At, at, when he, he said to spirit, then he came and gave that. And because they had in themselves great trust came upon them from the Lord. Now, how does the hardness of heart play out? Look at Mark. I'm reading from chapter Mark chapter 10, verse 5. Mark chapter 10, we're reading from verse 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Originally, at the beginning, God made them male and female. And it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make one hell a hell, a creative woman suitable and meet for him. And so, that's the reason why a man will leave his father and mother and come to his wife and be joined to his wife. And day two, not three, day two, not one man and two women, not one woman and two men, day two, one man, one woman, they'll be joined together for life until death do their part. But the children of Israel, as they went on, and they had a wife, each one, sometimes in the valley, sometimes on the mountain top, sometimes the woman will smile, other times she will frown. Sometimes the woman is good, other times she is not as good. And they started looking the other direction. And now they wanted to have a woman that will suit them. And they wanted to kick off, kick away the woman they had at home. Oh, if they didn't kick her away, they'll bring another one. So there can be competition between them. And if this one doesn't feed, the other one will feed. And when they discover that, maybe even the two, there are times they still didn't appreciate what was going on, some people will bring the third one. And then Jesus told them that God, the Heavenly Father, he made them male and female. He said, well then, if you are saying that, why did Moses give us the liberty that she can go and get another one. Divorce, get another one. So Jesus said, uh-uh, that was not of Moses. <laughs> you know the pressure you put on him. You know how you wanted to club his head and get rid of him. That's why Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, he gave you this precept. The point is, that's why Christ came. He came to remove that hardness of heart. Let me explain to you now. Many churches like the Palais, many churches like charismatic churches, many churches like Bible-believing churches, not only us, Bible-believing churches, they, they stood for the word. And they stood for that word on repentance. Anybody coming through any gate, coming into the church, repent and believe ye the gospel. And when some people said, no, Pastor, this is my church forever and ever. As for repentance, I don't, I don't sign in for that. And when they became adamant, no repentance again, no faith again, no conversion again. Many of the ministers have done like Moses. Okay, you want to come in with your hardness of heart? You don't want repentance? Okay, come in. And not you want me to sit down here? No opportunity. <laughs> no service, no activity, no. I cannot be like that. I must have a name. 
in the church, an assignment in the church. But you have not repented. Don't talk to me about that. I didn't come here to repent. Hardness of heart. So the ministers, they have to change, modify the word of God. Allow him to do what he wants to do is too much trouble. So I, I don't want hypertension. I want to remain a pastor. And I don't want any hypertension from any direction. Another one comes in and will say, and Jesus said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall not get into the kingdom of God. And we're hearing information. Look at that man. He says a member of our church. Look at that woman. She says she's a member of our church. And we confront her righteousness. Your life being upright. Your life being straightforward. Uh, Pastor, whatever you have heard, you have not even heard enough. I did all that and I'm still going to do more. Uh -huh. yeah, are you going to check out from our church? No. Whatever you will do, whatever you will preach, I am here, I am here. That's hardness of heart. We hear of restitution. That's the life we've lived. We've gotten that and gotten that and gotten this. And then we preach restitution. And somebody sends a text message faceless they don't want to identify themselves pastor i was in church today and i heard that fiery sermon fiery message restitution restitution pastor you know uh, since we don't know their name they don't give their identity they use a number we cannot trace pastor you know the house i live in a built was stolen money the certificate I hold in my hand, I cheated. And I got that side. What do you want me to do now? You want me to make restitution? I don't want you to make restitution. Christ wants you to make restitution. It's the word of Christ. And when Zacchaeus came, Zacchaeus said, half of my good I give to the poor. That's not enough, Zacchaeus. I know what you mean. If I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore them fourfold. Restitution. And the people there, restitution, restitution, were hurt. They said the way. They said the word of the Lord. The heart is hardened. The danger is the pastor knows them. But because of what his friends will say, what his family members will say, if we don't involve them, we modify the word of God for them. And so, as you modify the word, for the hardness of their heart. Now you make the coming of Christ useless, in vain, because there's no transformation anymore. There's no righteousness anymore. There is no redemption, regeneration anymore. Everybody now just does whatever he wants to do, whatever she wants to do, restitution, no way. Their hearts are hardened. And that creates a danger for the preacher, for the pastor, for the overseer. You understand? All those people in the wilderness, they paid for that hardness of heart. For the hardness of your heart, Moses wrote you this. How many of them go to the land of promise? No one. Even Moses almost missed it. What do we say today? The Lord now says in Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 18. Revelation 22, reading from verse 18. We cannot do now what Moses did long, long ago. Christ has now come. And he doesn't give any permission, any license for hardness of heart, for us to modify the words of repentance. 
for us to modify the word of restitution, for us to modify the word of regeneration and the word of righteousness that when we're born again, it saves us and it grants us righteousness with that salvation. And so if you're a preacher and you find hardness of heart, don't do that. How can you look at the Bible? Look at the, your counsel, your command, your pray, and the people still remain like that. What are you going to do? Some people, in their modification, they don't come out to announce, hey, everybody, repentance is no more necessary. They don't do that. They just cancel that word, repentance, from coming out of their mouths. They don't say, church, we're reviewing uh, doctrine, no more restitution. No, they just close their mouth. They never mention that again. A man has preached now in this church five years. All those five years, he has not mentioned the word restitution. He has not explained that word Restitution. He has not, he's just going on with religion. Religion without righteousness. Religion without the depth and the height of the word of God that brings change to every life. But look at it now. We don't have the liberty, we don't have the license of Moses anymore because their hearts are hardened or keep quiet. Or we modify, look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. For I, Christ, testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, any pastor, any preacher, any bishop, any general so pretended, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues, the torments, the punishments that are written in this book. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it tells us clearly, and if any man any Christian worker, any Christian professional, any preaching pastor, any shepherd, any leader, aid, any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. They don't like righteousness, holiness, purity. I believe it. I accept it. I want to live by it, but they don't like it. And I want them to, you know, keep on loving me, respecting me, appreciating me, clapping for me. And if I keep on holiness, 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 they are clapping will dwindle. So I want clapping more than heaven. I keep quiet. If anyone will take away from the words of this book, then you say, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. What does it profit you? It's better not to be a pastor, better not to be a preacher. Before you became pastor, before you became preacher, before you became Christian worker, Christian singer, you were born again, your name was in the book of life, and you're on your way to heaven now. It's a disservice unto you that you became a pastor because now the challenge is the people have their hardness of heart and you have to remove the word from the word of God and then your name is removed out of the book of life. If you don't have the courage to preach the word as the Lord has given us, why don't you check out why don't you go to your overseer and say, I'm sorry, I don't have the courage. I don't have the, uh, the stamina. I don't have the backbone to preach the word as it has been given unto me.
And because of that, maybe I'll have the courage later. I want to check out now and then go sexual with God. Because if the hardness of heart of the people will make you stop preaching the word and you are taking away, you cannot talk about marriage, one man, one wife, until death does part. You cannot talk to the people who say they are workers and they're living double standard. You know what? Their husband at home, they live like this. And when the husband is not there, they live like the other side. And you know, and you can't talk. You muscle your mouth and you cannot tell their marriage is honorable in all but the all-monger and the adulterer and the adulteress, God will judge. Uh -uh. If I say that, there are too many that fit into that situation in a local church, it will give me unnecessary trouble. What's unnecessary trouble? You must endure hardness as a soldier of Jesus Christ. You must endure the pressure. You must endure everything they bring upon you if you're going to stand and you're going to lead people to heaven, no divorce and remarriage. That's exactly what Jesus said in Mark. He said, Moses permitted you to do that. You cannot do that anymore. Uh, Pastor, uh, the, the great givers in our church, they're the people who have divorced and remarried. If I talk about that, they will leave, and their money will leave with them. But if you don't talk about it, you're a disappointment to heaven, a disappointment to Christ, a disappointment to the people who want to live straight. And so you don't want the money bags to check out and go to another church, and you bring damnation upon yourself, because it says that if you take away from the commandment, the precepts, the promises, the declaration of God, the Lord will take your name away from the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. I pray God will help us to come back so that in the church you have opportunity to preach to listen to the scripture to preach the main message to encourage people don't forget the foundation before we can get to heaven repent and believe ye the gospel bring that back don't forget accept the righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you or your hearers, will you know wise, get to the kingdom of God, bring it back. Redemption. He will redeem Israel from all his sins. Bring it back. Faith. The faith, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. For the, the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave themselves for me. Bring that back. Let's give the totality of the word of God, of the revelation of God unto the people of God, and let's prevent hardness of heart in our midst. I was waiting for you, amen. Yeah. You know, sometimes if you're a real preacher called by God and you say the word when you say the word you have to follow up on the word because the people will test your conviction you preach that way that way that way and there are the people that are pregnant with hardness of heart inside them and they come to show you the pregnancy of hard heart, hard stomach. And they carry it before you. And they are, they are trying to say, did you see that? 
I heard what you preached in the morning, and now I come to show you the hardness of heart is still there. I hope you don't do that to me. If you do that to me, after one or two exhortations, I forget about that heretic, allow him to go where he wants to go, into a lost eternity. But I'll not say because you have decided to be pregnant with hard heart and you want to go the other direction. I'm not going to stop. If you are not saved, that person will get saved. That other fellow there will get saved. And before, I'm not going to allow you with your hard heart to then transfer the hard heart to everybody in my congregation. I'll still keep on preaching so that the people that have ears to hear, they will hear. Yeah. Are they here tonight, today? Yeah. Having ears to hear, are you there today? That's why I came, you are the one I came for. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 19, Ezekiel chapter 11, we're looking at verse 19, and I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart, the hard heart, the stubborn heart, the rigid heart, I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart and heart of flesh. You need an amen. amen. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at preserving holiness for heaven. Then it says, through faith in his faithfulness. He is a faithful God. That's why we have faith in him. That's why we have confidence in him. When we talk of faith, we're talking about faith in a trustworthy God. Trustable God. In a God who gives a promise, who gives a condition, and he does not change. And we have that confidence in him he has the power he has the promise he has the program he has the preparation he has everything we need to give us that holiness of heart he knows actually that that is the most important experience we need about healing good but healing if I get healed from the most terrible disease, but I keep on lying, I keep on in hypocrisy, I keep on stealing, I keep on committing that thing they commit, but I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. The healing will not take you to heaven. The healing gives you strength and power from the Lord, and you're using the strength and the power from the Lord to do evil, to oppose him, to contradict him, to sin against him. That healing does not take anyone to heaven. What takes us to heaven is the holiness of heart. He comes and he pardons and he purges and he purifies that the reason why you Personally, you preserve holiness for heaven through faith in his faithfulness. That's why, as a teacher of the word, a preacher of the word, if you're giving chance, now come, demonstrate. Preach healing. You only have one chance and one topic, healing or holiness. Which one do you choose? Okay, look up at me. Which one do you think I will choose? Holiness. If on my last day on earth, the Lord tells me this, the last day, you are coming over. And you have chance, you are still strong enough, your voice is still okay. You have chance to preach just one message. 
before you come over healing or deliverance or success or holiness which one do you think i'll preach uh, that's what you should do too we should major on major things and minor we should be kind of minor or minor things that the word of holiness the experience of holiness will not die out of your mouth will not die in your local church will not die in your denomination we must have it experience it and preserve it because that is what takes us to heaven you're talking to a backslider and you know it's a backslider he knows it's a backslider you talk and talk and talk and the man or the woman even from her parents you can tell you are not like this before what are you going to talk about answer you know, we talk about good things, don't know about politics, we talk about weather, we talk about this, we talk about that. We're talking to her in a way so that she will know I'm a good man, I'm a good woman. No, you don't need to be good to her. Tell her this life you're living, this way you are going, you know the truth. If you continue this one, die in this condition, this is hellfire ah if i say that she'll not like me which one is more important for him to like you for her to like you or for her to get to hell forever and ever weigh your options look at what god does he does it for you he does it for me he does it for everyone he tells us in acts Chapter 15, reading there from verse 9. Acts chapter 15, verse 9. All those people that are collecting things over there, are you listening to the message? Is that one more important than hearing the word that prepares you for heaven? Look at Acts chapter 15, verse 9. And put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith it's god that does it it will do it for you psalm 24 i'm reading from verse 3 in psalm 24 verse 3 it, the question is asked who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in this holy place not just any place he's talking about heaven the holy place look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says he that has clean hands the word of god is still the word of god uh, the hands uh, you know um, uh, kind of uh, looking at this and looking at that and it's all pornography the hands that is, uh, you know, I didn't do the real thing. I only fumbled with my fingers. Uh-huh. Is that one holiness? I didn't, uh, you know, steal too much. I only took, uh, uh, you know, 100,000. That's holiness. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Those are the people going to heaven. Those are the people who are laboring on so that they will have clean hands in their office. They will have clean hands when they are with men or women. They will have clean hands when they live their private lives and a pure heart. And who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully it tells us in leviticus chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 7 leviticus chapter 20 verse 7 sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy to be sanctified means to be holy to be unholy means to be unsanctified sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i I'm the Lord your God. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and ye shall keep 
my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. He delights in sanctification. He specializes in sanctification. He prioritizes the priority. He makes that holiness of heart sanctification i was looking at first uh, at uh, chapter 19 verse 2 in leviticus chapter 19 reading from verse 2 speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. moses go, go talk to them i promise i'm taking them to the land of promise tell them the proviso Tell them the, convict, the condition and talk to all the congregation. The young people there, there's no double standard, the same standard for everyone. The women there, tell them the same thing. And the men, tell them the same thing. The rich in the congregation, the poor in the congregation, it's the same one standard condition that takes us to heaven speak unto all the congregation of the children of israel and say unto them ye shall be holy for i the lord your god am holy the lord will do it Amen. look at luke chapter one and I'm reading from verse 74. Luke chapter 1, verse 74. It tells us in Luke chapter 1, verse 74, that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without Fear. Look at verse 75. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Now, this, that word enemies delivered us from our enemies. I used to think somebody wants to take bread from my mouth to say that's an enemy somebody who wanted to take my job from me he pulls a hindrance a hurdle before me i said look at him look at him enemy now i understand the person the system that wants to put fear inside me so that i will not stand for god I will not stand for righteous. The one who wants to make me panic and put fear in me so that I will not be able to tell my conviction and say, ye must be born again. That fellow is a great enemy. Any system that wants to kind of put a hurdle before me that I will not speak holiness, I will not preach holiness. I will not live holiness. And then he says, come on now. I love you to be a pastor. I love you to be a motivational speaker. But don't talk about the way to heaven. It takes my calling away. It takes my uh, kind of the cause that I have. Is there not a cause? And am I not supposed to bring people out of the world and lead them to heaven? Anyone, man or woman, anyone inside or outside that wants to, you know, stuff your mouth, muscle your mouth, and create fear in you that you will not speak the word the Lord has given you. Not the greatest enemy, but God will deliver us from all enemies so that when you're delivered heaven will know because there'll be no fear in you anymore you're delivered from the agent of satan that will bring fear into your life that will stop you from talking and from having and from demonstrating 
the holiness that takes us to heaven. Anyone in this church coming from anywhere we want to help, we want to help, and then they are helping, they're cutting.